John chapter 20, verse 9. And the first nine verses is the part I just described to you where the disciples ran to the tomb and found the burial cloth. But in verse 9, uh, well, we'll just start in verse 8. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went inside. And he saw and believed. John believed. <coughs> but Peter was still confused. Verse 9. But they still, they still did not understand the Scripture. That Jesus had to rise from the dead. And now I want to continue reading. And we're going to read. We start in verse 10. Mary Magdalene. And then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the head and one at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but still did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? And who are you looking for? And thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my father, and you and your father, and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told him, and she told them that he had, uh, that all these things, that he'd said all these things to her. You know, I think of Mary's encounter and how beautiful and how personal it was. And she was confused, of course, and she thought, he's the gardener, or who is this man? And we don't know, was his identity being withheld from her up until that moment, or was there a little distance? Was he kind of, you know, far away from her? We don't know the exact circumstance, but she didn't realize yet that it was Jesus. And the Bible says when he called her name, Mary. When she heard his name, she realized, it's Jesus. And she cried out to him. And you know, now I just want us, uh, without uh, a lot more um, commentary, I'd just like us to turn now to Luke chapter 24 and see kind of the next thing that happens. Luke chapter 24. Remember, Mary's the only one who's seen him. And in Luke chapter 24, and I'm not going to take time today to go through it all and read it all, but two other men saw Jesus next. They were walking to their home village called Emmaus, and uh, all of a sudden there was somebody walking with them. And it was a similar experience, but in the end they too also knew it was Jesus. And they ate with him. And they knew it was Jesus. And these Two brothers on the road to Emmaus also ran back to the disciples. And Mary's in there telling everybody, I saw Jesus. And then these two guys from the road to Emmaus, they came running in. They're telling their story. But the disciples, all the disciples, only two have seen anything, Peter and John, and they've seen an empty tomb. That's it. They have not seen Jesus. They've just seen an empty tomb. And they're still all very confused. And then there's Thomas. And Thomas is just saying, I don't believe it, period. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm not going to believe it, in fact, he said, until I can touch, uh, put my finger in the nail hole, put my hand in the scar on his side where they pierced him with a spear. And that's where we pick it up in verse 36 of Luke chapter 24. And while they were still talking, in other words, these two brothers from Emmaus still testifying about what they'd seen. Verse 36. And while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and frightened, thinking that they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and at my feet. It is I myself. 
touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still, and while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, they asked him, because of joy and amazement, and he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms and then he opened their minds so they can understand the scriptures and he told them this is what is written the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem you are witnesses of these things and I'm going to send you what my father has promised but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And there's a lot I want us to see these two passages we've just seen pretty much tell most of the story about Mary and the other Mary. And, and now these disciples, basically at this stage all but Thomas, we're not going to get into that, but he appeared to Thomas another time later and did exactly what he told what Thomas had said. He walked up to Thomas and said, here, touch me. Put your fingers in my nail holes and put your uh, finger in my side where the spear went in. And when that happened, when Jesus did that, Thomas fell on his knees and Thomas said to him, to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Had quite an effect on Thomas. He went from being a doubter to a great believer. But.